In this recording, we look at the newton raphson method for finding numerical solution to an equation of the form f of x equals 0. And let's start off by looking visually at the situation. We have a function y equals f of x. I'm just going to draw one like that, let's say. We're wanting to know where the graph of y equals f of x cuts the x-axis. So that is our solution there. But particularly when we're dealing with equations that are not easy, or in some cases not even possible to give an exact solution for, this method can be very useful for getting a very good approximation to the solution. Let's have a look at how this method actually works. First we start with an initial guess, x0, for the solution. The actual solution is the y-intercept of this graph because it is where y equals f of x cuts the x-axis. Let's suppose our initial guess, x0, ended up being here, let's say. Imagine a point directly above that vertically on the graph. And I'll just call that point q0 that point on the graph would have coordinates x0, f of x0. Now consider the tangent to the curve y equals f of x at the point q0, which has coordinates x0, f of x0. That is, imagine dropping a tangent from this point here. I have just drawn that tangent line on the diagram in blue. Let the point where it touches the x-axis have coordinates x1, 0. That is, the value of x there, where that tangent touches the x-axis, will be x1. And the idea is that providing that the starting solution x0 was well chosen, x1 should be a better approximation to the solution of f of x equals 0. And here you can see that is the case it is getting closer to the x-value where the graph of f of x actually cuts the x-axis. How can we find the value of x1, this new approximation? And to see how to work this out, let's have a bit of a think about the points on the tangent to the curve. Now we saw that the tangent contains the point x0, f of x0. It also contains the point x1, 0. What is the gradient of a tangent to the curve at x0? Well, the gradient of a tangent to a curve at any given point is the first derivative at that point. That is, the gradient of the tangent will be f dashed x0, if we're looking at it there. But how can we actually work out the gradient of a straight line? Well, it's just rise over run, or a y value for one point minus a y value for another, divided by the x value for one point minus the x value for the other. Therefore, here, the gradient of a tangent to the curve will in fact be f of x0 minus 0, subtracting the y values, divided by x0 minus x1. We can rearrange this equation to get an expression for x1. In particular, if we multiply both sides by x0 minus x1, we get f dashed x0 times x0 minus x1 equal to f of x0 minus 0, which is just f of x0. We can then divide both sides by f dashed x0 to get x0 minus x1 equals f of x0 divided by f dashed x0. And rearranging that further then leads us to x1 equal to x0 minus f of x0 divided by f dashed x0. So what that means is that provided our starting solution x0 was well chosen, x1 calculated in this way based on the value of x0, the value of the function 
at x0 and the value of the derivative of the function at x0, this x1 calculated in this way should give us a better approximation to the solution of f of x equals 0. We would then continue on in the same way. That is, we would look vertically above x1, 0, up to the curve again, to the point x1, f of x1. And then from there, once again, we would drop a tangent from that point down to the x-axis. The point where that tangent hits the x-axis would then be labelled as x2, 0. So you can see x2 would be a better approximation to the solution of f of x equals 0 than x1 was. And as you repeat this method over and over, you should gradually get closer and closer to the true solution of y equals f of x when you're solving f of x equal to 0. So that's a sort of visual picture. But if we just think about how we would work out x2 with the formula, this is an iterative formula. So we're working out an approximation. Then we're substituting that back into the formula to get the next approximation, and so on. So x2 then would in fact be x1 minus f of x1 divided by f dashed x1. And you could see we could continue on in this way. That would be the second approximation to the solution. What would the nth approximation look like? Xn. You might want to pause and think about that for a minute. It would actually be Xn minus 1 minus f of Xn minus 1 divided by f dashed Xn minus 1. And that is the general format of the formula for working out approximations using newton raphson method. But obviously, we could go on like this forever. When do we actually stop? And how do we know if we've chosen a good starting solution? And the way we know if we have chosen a good starting solution, x0, is that after a time, the successive approximations should start to get more and more similar until correct to a given number of decimal places. Eventually, they should be the same. Whereas, if we have not chosen a good starting solution, x0, we'll find the values actually diverge. In fact, when we have chosen a poor starting approximation, they can fluctuate quite wildly after a time. So that is the best way to know if we've chosen a good starting solution. So often if people have an idea of the overall behaviour of the functions or can look at the graphs first, that can be a good way to choose a starting solution. So this recording has been an introduction to the background to the newton raphson method. However, you might want to look at our following recording, which will show an actual example of using that in practice.